Hi everyone, so welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to do some flowers. I'm actually doing them for a wedding cake for next month. Uh, and they've asked for some violets on the, uh, on the cake. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. So I'm going to take you down to my board. Right, now then. <coughs> I'm doing these with an all-in-one cutter now. There's all sorts of various different types of cutter you can use. Uh, just to give you an idea, I've got a picture here that I've printed off of my computer of uh, some violets. Um, and as you can see, at the bottom, we'll call it the pistol, which is the piece with the um, up the side with the stamen on. And then there's another, which has got the green at the bottom, and then the white. Uh, the uh, yellow part at the top has got like a, a white stem on it unfortunately to do it all together like that makes the centre very bulky so what I've done is I've improvised with that so I'll show you how to do that centre first and then uh, we'll get on to the next part the cutters I'm going to use now I'm going to use this one which is actually um, I can't remember what cutter it is <laughs> <laughs> Mine's gone blank. I was looking for a smaller cutter like this, um, but unfortunately it was a little bit too big and this was a bit smaller. So what I'm doing, I'm improvising because I haven't got a cutter for doing a violet with. So I'm going to use this one, which is reasonably decent size for that sort of flower. But I'm going to have to alter the petals a bit which I'll show you in the demonstration. So I'll just get some wires out. So I want some 26 gauge wires. I'm just going to get one out because this will do for all the bits that I've got to do here. Or most of them anyway. And I'm going to start off by cutting the wires into four because you don't need long stems on these. They're only small flowers. So we're not doing a rose or anything like that which is a much larger flower. So I need some white paste, I always start off doing them in white because then you can colour it as you want with flowers and some of them do have a paler centre so it's a lot easier to do that if you don't start off with a base colour. So I've got some white paste here, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the flower and I'm going to do a bud. I have already got some ready to colour. I've done my little blue beet a bit. So I'm going to start off with a small piece of paste to do the buds. Now it needs to be very small. So I'm going to cut that in half. So it wants to be smaller than a pet a or a garden pea. Probably about half the size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get one of these wires and I'm going to make a tiny little hook on the end of it. Because these are only 26 gauge wires they're a lot easier to bend into a hook on the end there. You need to make your hook quite fine. So if I put that on my hand there, hope you can see that. Right, so into your ball of paste. Pull that down. And then I'm going to thin it at the top, bring it up to a point like that. And then at the bottom, I'm going to thin it down to make the neck on the bottom of the bud there. Like that. Put that against my hand. So if you want to, you can make some. Um, marks into it for the start of your petals um, I'm using the small end of uh, my cutting wheel I'm just going to put three into this because it's so tiny nobody's going to be able to tell anyway but it just makes it look more like a bud right so we put that off to one side to dry put that at the back of my thing so I can uh... now the next thing that I need to make is the um, is the center for the flower so again small ball of paste that's a bit too big we'll cut that down a bit a 
again put a hook on the end of your wire now the top of this part that I'm going to do now when you look at the flower if I show you the picture again it looks like four balls on the end of something you can only see the top part of it there but having looked at pictures where you can see a side view of it uh, it does look for, like four balls on top of a, a narrow stem so I'm going to put my wire into the paste you could do this without the hook but remember to put some glue on your paste if you're going to do it that way bring that up so that the hooks well down into it then I'm going to taper the tape paste down underneath like that to make a stem on it and then what I've done with these is if you get a pair of uh, tweezers where's my tweezers gone under here somewhere hiding can't see them uh, see if I've got another pair here somewhere usually have more than more than one pair of tweezers I can't see them oh here they are got them found them so if you're using curved tweezers like this which are a bit easy to use get them so that you've got the curve going downwards and then get it in the middle and squeeze that together like that turn your paste round and then on either side like that squeeze that in as well like that now you're going to get a bit of a point on the top so if you just get your finger and just push that back down again and then you can go in with your tweezers again just to reshape it or you could go in with your cutting wheel to do it as well once you've got your grooves to follow like that so I'm just going to put that to one side for a minute and get rid of that paste there in fact I'll leave that to one side I'll do the flower next and then I'll come back to that for the next bit so what I need now is a small piece of paste roll that into a ball now we're going to use what they call the Mexican hat method for this flower so try and get your ball of paste as smooth as you can and then one end you're going to roll roll it into a cone the same as you do with a rose only this time it's not on a wire like that and then turn it up with the pointed end upwards and then start pressing between your finger and your thumb going round the bottom to make the brim of the hat a bit like a witch's hat if you want your back to be a little bit longer you can always thin that down a little bit because if it's too thick you cut a what for won't go over it which I will show you with uh, this cutter to give you an idea because it's got a very small hole in the middle so you need to make sure that this part is very small so the way you do that is just pop it over your cone that won't fit in there it's made a little bit of a mark around there so I need that need, needs to be a lot smaller so if you just get it round get it between your two fingers and roll like that so we can get that thinner like that once you've thinned that out then you need a cell stick small rolling pin so you can get right up to it and roll out to thin the brim out just keep going round it until you get your paste as thin as you want it to and what you can do is push right into the side like that push down and out push down and out to get rid of that thickness at the bottom of the uh, stem to make it smaller now I know that the cutter that I'm going to use will fit over that but I'll just show you with the other cutter how you need to measure it to make sure that that's going to fit so if you're going to use this cutter then you need to pop that over to see if the centre will go up it it wouldn't with that but I'm not going to use that one anyway so get whatever cut you're going to do make sure that your pot, your cone part is in the centre and then cut down with your flower like that 
so we can get rid of that paste there. I can put that away now because I don't need that. So before I go on to doing the flour then, I'm just going to put this onto my pad before I start dealing with that. I'm going to show you the next part to do with the that central part. Now then it has like a stamen that goes up the side, which is very, very fine. So what I've done is, uh, I've got old, have I got one on here? No. I've got one of my fine stamens. Like that. And what I've done is I've cut them in half. Now I've got one with a, an end missing off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that in half. And I'm just going to use the cotton part without the top on it. Take that off because you don't need that on it. Then what we need to do is I'm just going to get my colour that I've used on here and pop my bit of cotton on there. And with the colour that I've done my flowers with I'm going to brush all over to make that sort of like a purpley colour I'm doing one of the lighter colours in the um, violets so if you can see that hang on I'll just pick it up put it on. I don't you really, can't see it on my hand if I put it down on the white kitchen roll there you can see what I've done with that so if you get your centre now the next step we need to do is we need to dip this in some pollen before I uh, put that on. So I'll get my pollen out which is up there. Again everybody if you haven't watched my videos before when I've been doing pollen on flowers I always make my own because it's a damn sight cheaper. For a few, for under a pound you can buy some ground rice or semolina and uh, just mix them in a pot with one of your pa the powder colour you want and you can have loads of different coloured pollens then browns, greens, yellows, reds, whatever colour you want to use black for things like anemones and uh, poppies and that sort of thing so what I need to do now is get my glue and then I'm just going to coat the top part of the flower not the stem, I don't want it on there, just on the top part all over and then pop that into your pollen like that tap that off to get any loose off so then you've got your center ready for your flower there so we'll just put that away so if I get some tape and start that off underneath the column part of that Right, so I'm going to twist that up, push it up underneath the column there. Then I just get that piece of stamen and bring it up so that the top part just just goes past the top of your centre that you've done, and then tape down. take that off so that's your center ready to go into your flower so now I can continue with flower we're going to pop that up there for a minute while I finish the flower off get rid of that and the tape then we'll come back on to the flower so with your ball tool what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch the petal out and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start either side of this point because I don't want that point to be obvious on there because although it comes up a bit narrower at the top it doesn't have that point on it on the flowers on some of them I've missed on that but as when people are looking at the flowers as long as they can see what kind of flower it's supposed to be then you won't be able to tell so if you stretch them out like that just to stretch your petal a little bit mostly on the outside and then again finish off by going round the edge of your petals like that 
So I've got very fine petals here now. So the next thing is I'm going to use my silk veining tool to vein them. But first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open out the center of the flower. So if you just pop that in the center, you can do this with a cell stick or with this. But because I'm going to use it, I'm using what I've already got in my hands that I'm going to use. Open the center out like that just by pushing it against your finger, just gently rolling it round like that. And then if you get that between two fingers like that and then put your silk veining tool on and roll out to one side, roll out to the other side, which is going to stretch your petals a bit more, makes them extra fine. So you can see my finger through the uh, paste, it's so thin now. That also helps to get a bit ri rid of a bit more of that point on the petal on this one it's a petunia shaped cutter that's what I'm using I knew it had come to mind at some point before I'd finished doing what I was doing a little bit bent under there just bring that out onto my finger there we are stretch that one a little bit more there we are so that's that part done. Next thing to do then is put some glue in the centre of your flower. Like that. That's just so when you put your central part of your flower in that it will stay on the wire. Down into the centre of your hole there. Whoops. Twist it in so your tape doesn't come unravelled out to the bottom of your flower there and just gently pull that down until that just comes to about there and then thin the back of your petals your uh, back of your flower rather some of mine have gone a bit further down and some are showing a bit more above but it wants to be slightly above the flower put a bit of pressure on now to make sure that's attached to the wire like that now what I wanted to do is to have the flower a bit more close. So I put it upside down like that and bring your petals down. Now this paste that I'm using, I've been using for quite a long time. It's the egg free paste that I've given the recipe in some of my previous recipes. It does stay flexible for a few days because some of the flowers I've got I did a couple of days ago and they're still slightly flexible. The advantage with that, if you're a clumsy son, so like me, dropping things on the floor all the time, you're less likely to break anything. So basically I want to bring it up like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put that into my form and I'm going to put it into the side like that so the flower is upside down. Can you see that? So I've got it there. Okay? Until it's firmed up. Once it's firmed up, you can sand it upright. Right, the next thing that we need now is we need... I've got pins and needles in my fingers. I'm having a day with pins and needles for some reason today. But that's not going to stop me doing from what, what I'm doing. Right. I'll get my green paste out and I'm going to show you how I made a leaf. Now again, I haven't got a cutter. This I'm just going to cut one out, I'll just use a small piece of paste. So I'm going to put some white fat onto my board. And I've picked a bit of uh, colour when I was dusting earlier on. Let me just get a bit of uh, kitchen roll. Again, if you get colour on your board, like I've just done there, you can see it's just come up. Get some white fat on it, and that'll bring it off. I'm supposed to have covered my board to make sure I didn't get any colour on it, but I still managed to get some on. It flies everywhere, and you can't see it until you start wiping down. Right, so I'll start off with my big rolling pin, rolling this out.
as I mentioned in the last video that I did, always concentrate on the middle because your end bits get thinner faster than the middle bit so you need to concentrate a little bit more on the middle to get your pace more even if you just run your fingers over it you can feel where it's thicker and I'm going to use my ridge rolling pin to make my groove if you haven't got one of these and using one of the groove boards then turn it over and do your leaves on the groove side of your board just do a couple at a time don't try and do too many and don't forget when you're using the groove board before you cut it out, to take it off of the board, turn it over so you can see where the where your ridge is. So you make sure that you get that in the centre. So what I'm using for this, I'm using um, a rose petal cutter for this. So if I cut that out, like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that round and then with the pointed end of my cutter I'm going to take a little piece out of the top like that. Now that's too sharp a point there like that. So what I'm going to do now is get your cell stick on the edge like that and just roll it out that way and that way and that takes that sharp point off. So again roll it out that way and that way so it makes it a little bit more of a heart shaped top on it if we put it round that way you can see so I've got the veiner here so that's where your veiner is now that's the bottom part of your leaf door <laughs> I do like I did yesterday stuck all the wires in that end I ended up having to take them all out and redo them because I put them in the wrong end so I'm just going to get a 26 gauge green wire And again, I'm going to cut that into four. I'm only doing one leaf, but because I'm only, I haven't got any pieces already cut out, I'll have to uh, use a new wire. Cut it in half, and then in half again. And then your wire goes into the end where you've cut the V piece out. So again, get it between your finger and your thumb, twist it in and just guide it up the ridge so that it doesn't come out on either side. Just pop those wires to one side and then into the veiner. Now, remember, when you're putting it into the veiner that the part with the groove in it is the back of your leaf so your ridge there wants to go into the groove like that then you put the other half of your veiner on and give it a good press and there you have your leaf that's stuck in the thing there we are got you so that's the leaf so what then what I'm going to do then is get your bobble foam and just pop it into the centre so you get a bit of shaping. They are quite flat are the leaves on, on violets but like I said before if you when you're doing sugar craft if you do leaves too flat they just don't look lifelike. So we need to give nature a helping hand and uh, give them a little bit more movement. So I've dried all my leaves like that. So we can get rid of that out of there, get rid of my veiner. Ooh. sorry about that that's my pins and needles in the end of my fingers I don't know what's up with me today right so next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to cover all of my board with a piece of kitchen roll and then I've got my colours here that I'm going to use to do the flowers and the buds and everything else so I've got a flower here as you can see the petals are still a bit movable on this yet still a bit flexible and that was done two days ago uh, that's my dried bud uh, 
and we've got a leaf to colour as well. So I'm just going to pop that to one side. So we'll start off with the flower. So the colours I'm using here, again they're all edible art colours. So if you uh, if you use edible art or you can get all of the edible art from uh, edible art uh, edible art world of colour uk. This is a colour that I'm using which is violet and then I'm also going to use some Empress Purple as well which is the darker colour that I've got on there. So I'm just going to get my brush that I used. Where's it got? There it is. Always get it onto your kitchen roll first and then get the excess dust off your brush and then start from the outside brushing in. Make sure you catch all the edges because if you don't you can end up with the white showing through. It will look a bit darker when I've done the backs because I'm going to do the backs and the fronts of these as well. Just talk amongst yourselves while I'm doing this. That's usually what I say to my students because I'm used to teaching in a class where you've got people in the room where it's a bit difficult here because according to what my neighbours can see across the road it looks as like I'm talking to myself. I'm not, I'm talking to you but they don't know that. So I'm just going round the bottom there just to make sure I've covered all the white and then a little bit more powder. I'm going to go on to the back and do the back and then bring it part way down the, the uh, back part of the flower here. It's always best when you're dusting. It depends on what sort of dusting you're doing but we must, if you're covering the whole of the petal, always start from the outside brushing in. The only time we reverse that is if I'm doing something like a stargazer lily where it's the petals white with the colour in the centre then you do it the opposite way round but we're not doing that today we're doing one that's coloured all over. Now I'm leaving a little bit of white at the bottom because I'm going to dust that with some green but I'll come back to that in a bit. While I've got my, my colour on my brush I'm going to do this bud and I'm just going to bring that down again down the bud part bit more colour, that's better. So just bring it down the thick part of the, uh, you can leave a little bit underneath and bring the green up to meet that. So I'll just pop that to one side and then I've got another smaller brush here that I've used for the purple and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the purple out from the centre just to darken that centre a little bit. I'll go back to the picture in a bit to show you what why I've done that. Just be very careful, you need to keep it on the actual petals and not the column or the uh, centre part where your pollen is. Right, so we've done that. So if I bring the picture back over again to show you so I've got my darker centre there. So you can see how the petals are lighter on the outside and darker in the centre. You could bring that up a little bit more if you wanted to. Right, so put that to one side. And the bud, I'm going to leave there because I need that for the green. So I'll get rid of that brush now and I'm going to transfer over onto a green brush. Get rid of these colours. Now on the leaves I've used two colours here, two shades of green. Just get rid of that. Lift that up. Get another green down. There we are. There's, those are the two colours that I've used in green. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, 
I need some more colour on that. I've used uh, spring green which was the base colour for the leaf and then I've used a darker green in the centre but I've also used the spring green at the base of the buds and the base of the flowers so I'm just going to get a bit of colour onto there ready for my leaf and then very carefully brush up from the base of the bud on there like that so we put that to one side now go back to my flower that I've just coloured and again round the base of that just to bring that green up like that on there then if I get my leaf over that's the soft one I don't want that one this is one that I made yesterday these again these are still a little bit flexible so you can reshape them if they go out of shape when you're dusting so just gently brush all over with the spring green and on the back without putting any more colour on your brush backs of the leaves are always lighter so using the same colour just waft it over the back to get that bit of extra green there I'm going to get rid of that brush and I've got a smaller green brush here somewhere when I find what there it is so then I'm going to get some of the darker green uh, the darker green that I've used for this is called rainforest which is much darker and all I'm going to do is if you just up the center of your leaf like that and then pull it out now it doesn't look too obvious at this point but when I varnish it which I'm going to do next that will show you the difference there so that's rainforest top for that get rid of these colours they're a family business they're edible art so they're quite I don't know how much the colours are now but these used to be well I used to sell them for two uh, for I think it was about 110 or 120 a pot or something like that most of the colours on the market are a lot more expensive than that that's why I stick to them and they've got a much wider range than a lot of them as well right so the next step I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my varnishing brush which I've got here with some edible leaf varnish and just varnish the front of the leaf not the back the backs are always dull and just bring it down like that and then just bring it in from the sides like that easy as that make sure you clean your brush straight away afterwards I keep some isopropyl in here just for cleaning brushes which is looking a bit mucky at the moment but it still does it and then onto some onto your kitchen paper you can see whether it's brought the colour out of it or not put that back up there that can go to dry so I've got some here that I varnished earlier so as you can see they're sort of slightly darker in the center although violet leaves are the same appear to be the same color all over sometimes if you give a little bit of extra shade darker or something in the center of your leaves it just makes them look that bit more realistic and gives them a bit more definition that's the word I was looking for right get rid of that and get rid of that I think I've coloured everything there yes right so the next step now is to make them into a spray now I can show you a spray that I've already made up because I'm doing two sprays on this uh, wedding cake that I'm doing and I've already made one up here of the violets in a like a little bouquet type effect and what I've got in here is I've got seven flowers four buds and then six leaves round to frame the flowers which for something like that because it's actually going with um, a cake with bubbles on it if you haven't seen them before they're made out of uh, gelatine what you do is get the uh, water balloons and then blow them up to different sizes uh, make up a gelatine mixture and dip 
the balloons in the gelatin. Put your powder colour in to get whatever colours. In the case of this cake, it's going to have um, uh, pearl and gold bubbles, all in different shapes, all coming down the cake. And then it, and, and halfway down the cake, it's going to have a spray of uh, violets, and I'm going to put a spray in the top as well, on the top where I've made the last sort of round assortment of bubbles. Um, this is because the bride's grandmother was called Violet so that's why we're having the violets on so it's a bit of a sent sentimental touch to this cake that I'm doing but it's one of those double sided ones where these things on the back to do with how the couple met and uh, the journey to uh, getting married which I think is quite sweet is that you know it's a really nice idea right so on to making the spray so if I get all of my bits and pieces over I'll get my leaves down in a bit I'll do the uh, spray first so I'm using some uh, light green tape which is the Nile green Stamtex and stretchy tape at the beginning to find out which is the sticky side that's stuck to my finger so I'll turn that over so what you need to do now is to find which flower you're going to put in the centre and then I'm leaving probably about two inches above so start your tape off on that flower I'm just going to tilt my camera up so you can see what I'm doing here so I've gone about two inches up the flower and then you can start arranging your other flowers around the side of it. So if you bring them slightly above the middle one. So that when you pull them out they're going to come down lower down. Otherwise they're going to, if you don't do that they're going to be too low down. So again up above your central flower. Put your next one in. Get it going. It's, fine. it's easier to twist round once you've got a few flowers in when you've got more wires together. Keep them all at the same level so that they, they're all even when you get them, when you pull them out. Also by doing it this way you can see where your central flower is and where you put in your outer flowers as well. And the fact that these these uh, petals are still a bit movable means that if you're pushing them against each other, you're not going to break one off as easily. Either. Right, that's all the flowers in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull the flowers out like that. See how bendy that is. like that then I'm going to get my buds and feed them in sorry I've missed something there I forgot to uh, cover the wire up on this one that I've just dusted so I'm going to just going to put some scent text on so it matches all the others so they've all got the same colour stems on them then you could if you wanted to rather than doing this when you're dusting the base of your flower you could just dust down your wire but because I've already covered them with this colour, and it is for a wedding cake, um, I'm taping them, because that's what I've done with all the other ones. Right, so pop that down in there. So the bud is very slightly higher than the flowers. Again, because I'm going to pull it out a little bit. Pop that one in there. And I haven't dusted the back of that one, I've missed one. So I'll get my brush out, I don't need to put any more colour on it, there should be enough colour on there to dust that. There we are, that's that done. You can adjust where you want them to sit once you've got them all into your spray. Pop that one down there. Just pull these white flowers out a little bit more. I 
and that one can go in there. Like that. And tape down. It's always a good idea when you've got a few flowers in to tape down like that because you'll find that your flowers will grip a bit better and stop them from moving around quite as much. So if you just adjust your buds now, move them around just to open the whole thing out a little bit like that. So I'll just pop that in there while I just get my leaves down. And that's the last one that I've, that's almost dry is that one that I did, uh, the last leaf that I coloured and varnished. Right, so I can get my flowers again, get my tape and start it off again. At the same point where I've taped all the flowers in at the base there. Start that off round there, like that. And then if you get your wires and bend them down so you've got a bit of a piece of wire on there and then pop your leaves in so that they show underneath the flowers like that. So they're going to be your framework to frame your flowers. When you're doing any kind of spray that's what your leaves do. They form the framework around the back and if you don't put them on a spray looks I know I've said this before, but when I first started making flowers, I used to hate making the leaves. And then I, I soon realised that if you didn't have any leaves in your sprays, it just didn't look right. And you go to a florist and buy flowers, they always put some foliage in. Just ask your florist about it, they'll tell you. Because when you're doing sugar flowers or porcelain flowers or whatever else you, is you're making your flowers from the method is still the same you're just using different materials there are certain differences but there are a lot of things on the market that you can use to make your flowers with um, rice paper being the latest thing which is something that I've got to master yet I have had a go but I'm not happy with what I've done so far but I will get into it um, you still need your, your foliage in whatever it is you're doing oops and I've done it dropped a leaf I knew there was going to be a point where I was going to drop something I've done quite well so far now you can pull your wires down to make sure that those are nice and tight some of them are moving around a bit there so if you just get in and pull your wires down so it pulls them down to where you've just bent it you can get hold of them all, there's one wire there I can't get hold of that one, that's it now get my leaf that I dropped Ooh. doesn't matter if they're not all level by the way as well I mean they don't have to be uniform because nothing is perfect in nature I know I keep saying it but nothing is perfect in nature one leaf doesn't know what another leaf's doing although they're uh, live plants as far as I know they don't talk to each other <laughs> hey you've got a longer stem than I've got I don't I can't see that happening somehow. Right, so tape down with that. Down to the bottom. I've lost something off somewhere. Oh, I lost a petal. Right, so now you can open your leaves out now. You don't want them too flat, you just want them to just be behind the flowers like that can't see where I've lost a petal so I don't know what that was that went on the floor there we are 
that's my two sprays ready to go on the wedding cake so I'll just turn those round that way so you can see them bring that forward like that so I hope you've enjoyed this video uh, come back and see me soon in the next video don't forget I've got loads of other videos if there's anything you want to uh, see I can't remember how many videos I've done now I'd also like to thank all the people while I'm on uh, on now that have um, gone and watched my um, nasturtium video that is my top watched video it's got over twice as many watches as any other video that I've done so for those of you that watch that thank you very much I really appreciate it so don't forget to make if you've got any comments about anything uh, that you've seen me do any questions you want to ask leave them down below underneath the video um, and if you've got any ideas of anything that you'd like to see also leave that down below as well I've had the odd comment out now and again but I, I need a few of you to get your thinking caps on and try and stretch me a little bit see if there's something you can come up with that I haven't done before um, so there we are anyway that's all that said so take care see you soon take care